Let's go on to the uh, to talk a little bit about the process of um, of uh, game design. And what's really most interesting to me about the process of game design, and in fact, getting to be more and more the process of any kind of large information design, information system design, is that it's sort of a combination of two different worlds. Once upon a time, there was movies. And, you know, over the last hundred years, we've sort of figured out how to do movies. You know, we've got standard job descriptions, things like the key grip and the best boy, right? <laughs> All those weird job descriptions that came out of, of, of a long time of trying movies and what people came to be called. Lots and lots of staff members, lots and lots of processes that you go through. Movies are a well-known phenomenon. There are people, you know, three, four generations of people now who have been doing movies over and over again. Very well-known discipline. Then we have the discipline of software engineering. Software engineering being, and by you can tell by the title, it's kind of an offshoot of engineering. And originally, that's exactly how software was created, by a bunch of engineers. In fact, I'll tell you, when I first studied software, it was before you would become a programmer. You were more an engineer, and you needed to program some of your devices. You needed to program some of the things that you worked with. You were an engineer first, and you had to learn how to create software the same way that you had to learn how to do mathematics because it was part of your job. Only thereafter did the job of software engineer or programmer split off and become a separate entity. At first it was really engineers that were doing, that were doing all the software development. And so software development itself split off from engineering. So the very first software development processes were a lot like engineering processes. And I won't go into detail about what those engineering processes are, but what I want to say is that it was certainly very different than making movies. <laughs> you can imagine a bunch of engineers, you know, in a back room designing some, you know, airplane wing or something like that versus a bunch of people in a, in a movie studio designing, studio, uh, designing um, movies. Now comes the modern era, and it's really not about game design so much as it is about the web and sophisticated user interface and very graphical ways of going about things and as I've mentioned before the changeover from the expert perspective which says hey I write software you figure out how to use it I could care less to the to the age where if it's not immediately apparent how you use this software then it's the problem of the software makers right we've had a complete mind shift well for a long time the engineers really didn't make that mind shift so what happens when, when we got to this, this kind of new multimedia age of computers was a clash of cultures. And to the point where today, you know, it's already been 20 years basically since, since an engineer found himself, and 20 years ago it was basically hims, sitting across the table from a, um, you know, from a video producer or from a, a writer or an artist or, you know, a, a sound designer or an actor. Right? So now there's these tables that are full of all these people. So, so in effect, the, um, the process of game design is a mashup. It's a combination of those two really kind, very different worlds to bring together um, both something that's like a movie, the setting and the characters and the mood and the music and the actors and the voices that are behind something like World of Warcraft, and the, the software and the, you know, the programming that has to go into making that happen. And as I said before, the people who do these things are capable of doing them, are good at doing them, because they can cross over those disciplines. The engineers can be creative. The creative people can use technical tools that you know, are crashing all the time and breaking and you know, require you to you know, kind of fix them every time you, know, you use them. That's the, that's the state of that art. So we have the movie kind of thing, and, and I saw a quote here that uh, an MMORPG could have 500 hours of content. Imagine a movie that's 500 hours long, <laughs> right? That's the amount of content that they're creating. Now, it's not all at the quality of a movie, but you get the idea, right? So they have to be concerned with the story and the character and the scenery and the props, and with actors, having actual actors come in and, and do voiceovers, for example, for different characters making, either making noises or saying things to the, um, to the players, etc. And then we have the software developers who are, who are um, very concerned with this thing happening on the client this thing happening on the server, um, the tools that we're going to create in order to facilitate our artists to make um, really good textures, um, to change the way that sky looks or to change the way that water looks or something like that. And so that's the process. It's a combination of making a really good movie and making really good software. 
And as I've said before, there's a huge crossover there. And to be successful, it can't look like a movie that then people put into a computer program. It has to be seamless between those things. And we're just barely figuring out how to do that. We're just barely figuring out how to combine really high-end software with the best animation techniques and the best movie techniques. I want to zoom in a little bit on one aspect of, um, of game design, and that's the design of a zone. So it's more along these, this movie line, and, the, and um, I, want to, I want to show you a little video that I found about, um, about that process, specifically for World of Warcraft. <laughs> 